This is a podcast of the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Catherine Owen talks about the different types of diabetes in young adults. Hello Catherine. Hello. What causes diabetes in young adults? Um, quite a few things actually. So you might have heard about, people talk about type 1 and type 2 diabetes, which are the common forms of diabetes. So type 1 diabetes is much more common in children and adolescents, but continues to um, arise through young adult life. Whereas type 2 diabetes is much um, more common in middle to old age, but increasingly these days we're seeing it in, in younger people too. Um, but what people are much less likely to have heard about are um, some other rare forms of diabetes caused by uh, changes in single genes, also called monogenic diabetes, and it's also sometimes called maturity onset diabetes of the young, or MODI. Um, and the interesting thing about these forms of diabetes is that they also arise in young adulthood. So when we meet a patient who's been diagnosed, say, between the ages of 10 and 40, um, they, there's quite a wide range of possible causes for, for that diabetes that we have to think about as, as, as doctors. And is it easy to distinguish between different types of diabetes? Well, it often isn't, uh, and that's one of the problems that we have. Um, the, the there's quite a lot of overlap between the clinical features of these different forms uh, of diabetes. Um, and for instance, if we think about monogenic diabetes, there are some features in common with type 1 diabetes and some in common with type 2 diabetes. And because medicine's not an exact science often, um, we can't always tell very easily. And how does a correct diagnosis affect treatment? It's very important. If you're thinking about type 1 diabetes, then the appropriate treatment is insulin treatment for the rest of your life. However, for type 2 diabetes, the usual first uh, tablet that's used to treat this is a tablet called metformin. However, if you take the commonest kinds of MODI, then um, for one form, a tablet, a different kind of tablet called a sulfonylurea, is very much more effective than uh, metformin. And for another kind of monogenic diabetes, you don't need any treatment at all. So the what can happen is that Say, for example, someone's been diagnosed with diabetes at the age of 20, they're often assumed because of their age to have type 1 diabetes and are commenced on insulin injection treatment. But if you subsequently find that they've got monogenic diabetes or MODI, then they can actually stop taking those insulin injections and uh, have a tablet or no treatment at all instead. And you can imagine that makes a huge impact on people's lives. So what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? Well, from our point of view, trying to increase uptake of testing for these rare forms of diabetes is very important because we estimate that only 10 to 20 percent of people who've actually got monogenic diabetes are being given the correct diagnosis and having the opportunity for those treatment changes that I talked about. So what I've been doing over the last five years or so in uh, Oxford is to try and work out what are the key clinical features for diagnosing people who've got monogenic diabetes, and also are there additional biochemical or immunological blood tests that we can do to um, add to the clinical features. So our overall aim is to make diagnostic protocols that all clinicians all over the country can use in order to uh, identify all the people who've got monogenic diabetes rather than just a small proportion of them. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? I think I'm very lucky working closely with patients because I can see the direct impact that my research has on those individuals. So I find that people are always very keen to know more about what's caused their diabetes and how it might affect their family. And if you're able to make a treatment change, such as stopping insulin, then obviously that has a huge impact on those individuals and I would say our ultimate aim is to try and be able to put this sort of personalised medicine um, there for everybody with, with diabetes. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Uh, well I think because the department's got a very tr strong track record of successful research in the genetics of type 2 diabetes and obesity and other related metabolic conditions. Um, because my work is very clinical, I think it complements very well with the more complex statistical genetics work that's done and also the laboratory-based 
functional genetics work that, that, that's being done. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you.